What's going on, guys? Welcome to Shepherds and Kings. My name is Jacob Chalor, and I'm the founder and the host of the podcast. If this is your first time stopping by, or if you've uh, listened before, thanks for taking the time to listen. And we hope it's just one more tool in your tool belt that you can use to become the kind of man, the father, the husband that you need to be. Now, we just had Father's Day, uh, and this topic may be a little bit um, weird uh, to put right after Father's Day, but it's so important and it's so necessary. And it's so uh, pervasive in our society, uh, not just through Christian men, but men in general. But it affects an overwhelming majority of Christian men, and that's our sexual integrity. And so our guest today, uh, Steve Arterburn, who is an author, a radio show host, he uh, takes some time to talk to us today. Before that, though, of course, shout out to Clean5110. If you have not gone by to check them out, Make sure that you do check them out online, clean5110.com or on social media. You can use the code SHEPHERD if you buy something on their website to get 10% off. And again, that's a fitness and lifestyle apparel brand who uh, is just pushing a good, clean Christian message and, of course, a whole or a uh, pro-life message. So please go support them. All right, let's get to our interview. Our guest today is Steve Arterburn. Steve is the founder of New Life Ministries and the host of the nationally syndicated Christian counseling talk show, New Life Live. He is an internationally known public speaker, uh, the founder of the Women of Faith Conferences, and the best-selling author of such books as Every Man's Battle, Healing is a Choice, The Seven-Minute Marriage Solution, and most recently, Take Your Life Back. Steve, it's good to have you on the show. Thank you. Great to be with you. Yeah, really glad to be here. Uh, Can you tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, we're here to talk about the Every Man's Battle series. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, where that came from and your involvement in it and why it's, you know, so important? Well, you know, the book, the original book came out 20 years ago, and we have just uh, released an update with all the new brain science and stuff as our 20th anniversary book. It sold, uh, well, the series has sold over 4 million books, if you can imagine that. Wow. Um, I had written a book about sexual integrity, and uh, it was selling, oh, maybe a thousand copies uh, a year. And I received this phone call from a publisher, Dan Rich, and he said, hey, would you be interested in uh, doing a a book, a really great book with a guy named Fred Stoker, and it's on lust, pornography, uh, sexual addiction, all this. And I go, you know, I'm really not. Because I've done it, and it, yeah. uh, nobody wanted to read that book. So he said, well, would you be willing for me just to send you the manuscript? He said, because this is uh, really quite a great manuscript, and nobody knows who Fred is. But, you know, if you liked it and co-authored with him, people would know about this book. Said, okay, send it to me. Well, I read his manuscript, and um, – it, it was something that was so different. It wasn't about the problem so much as about the solution. Mm. And, and I really uh, loved it. And I, I had a couple of stories uh, that I thought might help. And in fact, uh, the first story in the book is of me uh, taking this new, uh, it wasn't new, it was used, but it's new to me, this little Mercedes convertible that had been my dream car. And I was driving it. I uh, hadn't been in California very long, and I was driving it from Southern California up to this little coastline city of Oxnard, and I was going to testify about their need for an alcohol and drug treatment center. And so as I'm driving up, um, there's a woman jogging in a bikini. Now, I'm from Texas, and uh, women there did not – I'm not trying to excuse myself. I'm just yeah. – but, but it was not a common thing. Right. That's, and so I am watching this. I'm, I'm married at the time, and uh, I shouldn't have given it a second glance, but I didn't just give it a second. I mean, I was, it, it's, it's fortunate my whole neck didn't snap off. And, and while I was looking back, um, I hit the car in front of me in wow. this little prize car that I had wanted. <laughs> and so, you know, immediately I'm thinking, oh boy, how am I ever going to tell my wife uh, what it was like to swerve, uh, to try to miss that puppy and run into a car? I mean, immediately I went to, I have <laughs> yeah. to 
I have to lie about this thing. And, but that was a real turning point, you know, uh, on the way home, just thinking, you know, who am I going to be? Is this the guy uh, I'm going to be, or am I going to be somebody that's truly faithful with my heart, soul, and my eyes? So I knew that and some other things that I really want to talk about in the area of sexual addiction and stuff. So I teamed up with Fred and um, we sent the book out and pretty soon pastors started reading it and they would go into a bookstore and they'd order every, every copy they had. It became the most frequently reordered book because pastors were buying it and just giving it to every guy uh, that they could find because it had so much hope in it. And that was back at a time when, uh, you know, promise keepers had done their survey and, you know, 65% of the guys were looking at pornography. Uh, that statistic hasn't really uh, changed that much. And of course, we're doing this right in the heart of the uh, COVID-19 uh, epidemic or pandemic. And uh, porn sites are way up uh, at this particular time. So, uh, what was a problem then continues to be a problem now. And, um, you know, if you want to do something about the problem, then, you know, this book is a great, I think, a great answer to it uh, because it doesn't just talk about the problem. It talks about how to overcome it and really helps you with that. Sure. You talked a little bit about, you know, the being the, the COVID thing having an effect on, on um, pornography viewing. Do you think in general, you know, you said it's a 20 year difference now, um, 20 year anniversary of the book that the culture 20 years later is that much more desensitized and that much um, more out there. And is it that much harder for them as Christian men to gain sexual purity? Well, it's not harder to gain it because 20 years ago, there weren't many um, groups or, um, not everybody was admitting that that it was as big a problem as it is. Now, sure. um, last week, I was on a in a Zoom meeting uh, called an Every Man's Battle meeting. Now, I'm the teaching pastor at this church, Northview Church, um, northviewchurch.us, where you can find it. We're the third fastest growing church in America. We have 13 campuses. Three of them are in prisons. But there's this guy, Michael Carey, who struggled with uh, lust and pornography, and he decided, separate from me being part of the church, to start um, a group of men, Every Man's Battle. And these groups are everywhere. The group I was in, 83 guys were in on this Zoom call. Wow. Just, you know, one church. That's, that's pretty significant. And, um, and that's, that's all over the country now. So I would just say this. There are so many more uh, recovery groups or just every man's battle groups. And if you wanted to know about one, you could call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We could tell you where to go or newlife.com. But so much more help available. But, um, you know, it's just so difficult to avoid um, the pornography. You know, if you were an alcoholic, um, somebody doesn't run into your office every 10 minutes and say, hey, here's a bottle of vodka. You want it? And you got to say, no, no, thanks. I'm recovering out on it. Right. But I mean, you know, if, if you have YouTube and it doesn't have the right filters, then it's just, it, I mean, I literally had to remove the YouTube app from, and I love YouTube videos, but I had to remove the app because just so much stuff there that's so tempting. So, you know, more help than ever but more opportunity to mess up than ever too. Sure. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, so why spiritually um, does God place this, such a high importance on sexual sin? I know there's a lot of verses that talk about um, fornication as a, you know, a physical act, um, but then there's a lot of obviously spiritual connotation there as well. Yeah. Well, you know, um, it really is uh, at the heart of, of God. God is a, a God of love. I mean, he, he isn't just a loving God. He is love. And what does he love? Well, he loves his creation. And so um, what grips and rips the, uh, the creation uh, to pieces more than this divided heart of, hey, I'm this good guy over here, but look at this, this little box, this secret, 
sinful sex box over here. So I'm split. So now I'm, I rather than God loving me, me loving God. Now I've got this shame thing. I got to deal with over here rather than me being authentic and, and, um, open and free. Now I've got this thing and I, and I don't feel good about myself. So really it just, uh, Satan uses this, this great gift of sexual fulfillment, uh, uses that as the thing, the number one thing, I think, to destroy more men and their relationship with God. Uh, I mean, look at Harvey Weinstein. I mean, yeah. uh, this, this guy had everything. And now he's, he's sick and in prison and all of this. And, and there's so many of these guys that have been called out uh, public figures, you know, right. and you just, well, we do a, we do an every man's battle, uh, intensive from Friday to Sunday. And you just, you just think if somehow any of those guys had stumbled on to that little Friday through Sunday experience, they literally had about, if you go to that, you got about a 95% chance of success. So when all of this came up, you never heard one person say this. I didn't. Uh, I never heard anybody say, yeah, you know what? That was true. Uh, I did do that uh, 30 years ago or 20 yeah. years ago or 10 years ago. Yeah, I did that. But you know what? Uh, I, I realized what I was doing to myself, my family, and women, and I went and got some help. And for 10 years, I can tell you, or 15 or even five, for five years, here's my accountability partner. You can call him. Here's the group I talk. You know, that that is not, wouldn't, I mean, if you were a PR guy for these movie stars and stuff, or you'd say, hey, do this. But yeah. nobody is able to do that. So um, I, it's really sad. And, and a lot of our major supporters, some of our biggest supporters at New Life, they support us because they would have lost everything. Um, you know, one guy is very open about this. He was on the the Federal Reserve Board. Now he's on my board, and wow. uh, he operates uh, one of the largest uh, floor manufacturing companies internationally. And he says, "I support you guys. I'll do anything for you because on at Christmas I've got a, a picture of me and my family, my grandkids. We're all together. But if I hadn't found help." Um, my wife would have divorced me. I'd be living in a separate place. It would have been a mess. So, you know, there's so much hope and healing and restoration. And you feel so good about yourself. Yeah. Or you can, you know, continue to mess around and mess with yourself, you could say, and be the guy that's still the little boy looking at dirty pictures. I, I think that's a horrible thing to look yourself in the mirror and say, hey, I'm just like a little boy looking at dirty pictures yeah, and um, and it's just a horrible way to live. Do you think um, the, the reason it seems to me anyway, that the, the main reason that men wouldn't get help is because of a uh, fear or pride. Uh, is that accurate? Well, yeah. I mean, nobody wants to, um, I think they, they, they don't want to admit they're so full of shame. They don't want to open up about that. Sure. Also, I think when, you know, it's hard for guys to think that they're really hooked on something. And it's very hard for them to say, uh, this has me or I need help with it. You know, a guy will say like, you know, I could, I, I could quit tomorrow, you know. Well, yeah. tomorrow never comes. But one of the things that we put in the new book, it's pretty insightful. Uh, we didn't know about this uh, 20 years ago. but um, you know, when, when a man and a woman, when they have a sexual experience together, um, you feel good. You have this, this uh, experience that feels so great because there's this spike of dopamine, just, you know, just like from heroin. And the heroin spikes that high, but, you know, the sexual fulfillment spikes that's high. But anyway, it's there. It's fantastic. It's wonderful. God, some people... 